Hello, Dr. Brian Abelson from Kinetic Health. Today we're going to talk about the lateral fascial line. Now, this is all about interconnections between muscles, tendons, ligaments with connective tissue fascia. And it's really interesting if we follow this line because we're going to see that this line runs from the bottom of the foot all the way to the top of the head. Now, it's really important to see why we're even going over this. We want you to understand some of the connections in the kinetic chain that are used to, let's say for example you have a problem with an ankle sprain and you say, okay, let's get in there and treat this and we find that you know, a certain percentage actually comes around quite well, but some people just don't. And it's quite often because of restrictions farther up the kinetic chain. Restrictions that may happen at any point. But we'll get into that. We're also going to talk a little about the correlation between this line and the gallbladder meridian. We'll soon see that the fascial plane or the interconnections are in exactly the same positions as the gallbladder meridian. But before we get into that, let's just go over the actual chain itself. Hello, Dr. Evangelos Milanas at Kinetic Health. I'll be outlining the lateral fascial line now that Brian mentioned. So when we look at it, it actually starts on the bottom of the foot. So it starts behind the big toe, but underneath. And then it wraps around coming out behind the base of the fifth metatarsal here, coming up behind the lateral malleolus, and it literally will follow the peroneal musculature and the tendons all the way up to the fibular head. And then it goes into the anterior ligament of that fibular head and ties right into the IT band, the iliotibial band. Very strong connection, and you can literally see it follows that IT band all the way up to the top of the hip here. Then it, it almost fans out, tying into the front, the TFL, the tensor fascia lata, as well as the gluteus maximus. So this is what we refer to as the deltoid complex, and it ties right into those hip abductor, abductors, extensors, and some of the flexors. As it comes up here, then you see how it starts to zigzag, tying into the oblique musculature of the abdomen, the abdominal obliques, and into the intercostal muscles, the external and internal intercostals between the ribs. As it comes up here, it wraps around the arm. There's a separate line which we'll discuss at another point, which is part of the arm, that part of the fascial plane. And especially this part here, it wraps through and it ties into the SCM, which is here. That's the sternocleidomastoid, which is on the front and side of the neck, coming up into the back of the skull. The other one comes from the splenius capitis muscle coming up and you can see how they crisscross here tying back into the skull. And that is continuous with the scalp fascia. So when we look at this plane, this fascial plane, this part of the kinetic chain, it's quite an important one that we see here at the clinic. So once again, running along the lateral structures all the way up and then tying in. So it's quite fascinating how the fascia is just interwoven throughout the body. Okay, let's discuss a few of the major areas between fascial anatomy and acupuncture. What I've done is I've actually placed four stars on Thara here on specific points on what we call the gallbladder meridian. In Chinese medicine we have lines, they refer to lines of energy, and at each of these lines you'll get acupuncture points. Now if we look at the gallbladder meridian we'll see that it actually correlates directly with the fascial line here. So if we start down at the bottom of the foot here we'll see that we've got one right on the bottom here gallbladder 40, and we'll see it's a very interesting point because this point is actually used in acupuncture for migraine headaches. And we have to say to ourselves, well, how could we possibly make an effect in the head by putting a needle into the foot? It just doesn't make sense. That's why sometimes in uh, certain skeptics of acupuncture will say, well, that doesn't make sense, this must be a placebo effect. I disagree completely. And the reason I do that is because some very interesting research has come out in acupuncture. When they put a needle into an area, we put the needle in and we stimulate it. We torque it. We give it a little bit of a tug. Now, when we're doing that, we're actually creating a fascial stretch. They can actually measure this. They have little robots that actually measure the amount of torque on this needle. And they can even take pictures and see where there's the connective tissue actually goes in a spiral. It's, it's really interesting. In any case, what we're doing here by creating this fascial stretch is we're affecting the surrounding nervous system. Now, if we look and we go back to the fascial plane, we're talking about interconnections between anatomical structures. Each of these structures, we have different structures in parallel, and between these different structures, we have a lot of neurological and vascular structures. So when we're putting the needle in and we're torquing it, we're affecting everything in the surrounding area. Now, all these structures come, of course, from our central nervous system, our brain, peripheral nervous system. So basically, when we put a little torque on there, we're affecting the entire line. 
So that's why you can put a needle in down here and create a, a solution to a problem you have in terms of a headache. If we move up a little bit, we'll see a point here on the side of the leg, just in front of the fibrillator. And it's really interesting because from a neurological perspective, you say, how could this affect different conditions? Well, sure enough, when they put this in and stimulate the area, they found really good results with a lot of people who have Parkinson's disease. Move up a little farther, we get to a point around the abdomen area here. Besides affecting all the local structures in this here, this will affect digestion. Same sort of thing, when people go in and practitioners work on the fascial line, and they actually work on some of these structures around here, they may be trying to alleviate maybe a hip problem or something in there. And secondarily, the person will say, you know, once you get rid of that problem, now my digestion is good. Everything, everything's fine there. Moving farther up, we get up on the shoulder, and we see this point right on the top of the shoulder here, gallbladder 21. Now, that point is actually used for shoulder pain, neck pain, and headaches. So now we begin to see that this is actually an interrelated line of connections with both neurological and vascular structures.